It's been about a week since Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles has been out. I think it's an okay amount of time to criticize the game now. The honeymoon phase is dead, and I'll just address the elephant in the room because I know a lot of other content creators refuse to talk anything negative towards a CC2 arena fighter. Next. Hey yo guys, your favorite Kage, Enigma Kage, bringing you yet another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hope you stick around, watch a few of my videos, and hey, maybe you'll subscribe today. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button because it greatly helps out the video in more ways than you guys can imagine. So check it. Demon Slayer The Hinokami Chronicles is the latest flashy new arena fighter on the block. And just like every other arena fighter since 2019, it must be compared to Bandai Namco's Jump Force. I'm not here to do that, but I do want to point out the hypocrisy of the anime gaming community. Jump Force by casuals outside of the community, um, you know, the ones that haven't actually played the game, just played the story mode, and haven't played online since 2019, consider that game an unbalanced dumpster fire. I can safely say Hinokami Chronicles, although it's visually pleasing, and fun with friends doesn't avoid the unbalanced BS like every other arena fighter in existence. I know, I know, you've seen content creators rave about the game saying it's the greatest arena fighter in the last decade. Bruh, you probably never played a Gundam game. Ever. The game on a high level, which isn't saying much, can look drastically different than those of us who play on a lower tier. I enjoy the game for what it's worth, but I can quickly see someone playing this for a while and then dropping it due to the unbalancedness and the small ass roster. A major part that I don't enjoy is that the game sometimes feels like a one button masher with the added taste of TOD. Now, when Jump First first dropped, everyone said, oh, you could beat anybody by just pressing the square button, which is the most foolish thing you can tell anybody who actually played the game, doesn't make any sense. But in Hinokami Chronicles, you literally can beat somebody with the X or square button. Just keep spamming the X or square button then throw in a circle or B to dash towards them and continue the combo over and over again. There's absolutely no downside to that. Unlike its daddy, Storm 4, Hinokrona Chronicles offer the players enormous amounts of opportunity to spam and in the opponent since they can only escape once every minute or so. I mean, it's fine. One escape isn't the end of the world. I mean, in Storm, you had, what, five escapes or something? It's five subs? So this is actually okay in my book. But the janky damage makes you lose 50% of health after every two combo strings. You can seriously spam the same combo over and over because it's encouraged. The push block and parry system seems like awesome additions to the defense mechanics, but honestly, it fails you more than it should. The input lag on PS4 is a joke. As an Xbox player, we don't have that issue, but to know that people are exploiting these water wheel spamming while there's input lag tells you everything you need to know about the core player base of the game. Jump Force has those people who love to guard break stun lock, also known as guard break cheese in our community, and Hinakami Chronicles encourage you to repeatedly spam the X or square button until you can cause a shield break. All it takes is an Inosuke player or assist to easily achieve that. Speaking of Inosuke, I notice a lot of people using this said character for spam purposes. You get that a lot in Hinakami Chronicles. People choosing characters and using them in the most robotic fashion. CC2 makes gorgeous games, but they also make it brain dead easy with their one button attacks. Basically, you're trapped into the same loop de loop combo over and over again, and we're all supposed to clap and praise it like, oh, this is some amazing fighting. But in reality, it's really not. It's just all cinematic BS. Lastly, I need CC2 to do something about surge and boost in the game. It allows the player unlimited special attacks for the duration of the boost bar. It goes back to what I said earlier. You can really pull off some janky stuff which allows you to further punish someone with surge and go for that good old touch of death. I'll admit, you will not get these type of people every single match. But you will get them more than half the time when you sit down and play. The Hinokami Chronicles is a gorgeous game that is not immune to criticism. Stop acting like you owe CC2 your life. You can say, hey, I love the game, it's fun. I enjoy it, it looks beautiful. 
but there's some crazy stuff that goes on. I'm just brave enough to say it because I really don't care, but you can't expect to get another arena fighter to be somewhat good if we keep accepting the BS that they've given us. My advice to you is to train, learn how to counterplay these square button matches because I'm telling you, you'll get frustrated within the first five matches you play. I like the game. I truly do. I just see how the community is going to be within the next three months. If you would like to add to anything I've said just now, please feel free in the comment section below. And as always, I'm Enigma, signing off. Peace, guys.